Hey everyone, welcome back to Google Workspace Recap, where we review everything new to Workspace every week. My name is Justin Nolan, my co-host is Steve Larson, and we're here to help you keep up. I think I have finally run out of new t-shirts that I'm buying from fellow creators, or maybe they just got buried in the drawer, I don't know, I'll have to check. Uh, we have a whole bunch of updates tonight, so buckle up and let's get started. Steve, how's it going? Yeah, good. Yeah, a lot of updates outside of the, 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 um, the Workspace updates we just have. Well, we have... Um, about three, three that came out through the week. Four, mm-hmm. uh, four that they mentioned in the recap post, but actually five. If you read <laughs> closely. And yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of other updates. Even Bar came out with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Chrome 115 is coming out with a few new updates. Some interesting, uh, like a redesign of the Emma console there. And um, yeah, another minor update on Driver Desktop. So uh, you know, good, good amount of stuff to uh, to get through today. Uh, otherwise, you know. Um, not much else happening here. I mean, we're trying to figure out next. I think you've um, yeah. managed to sort out accommodation and probably um, maybe flights, I assume, as well. I have. I have, uh, yep. I um, have yet to do either of those. I have my ticket, eek. and that's about it. So. Uh, well, I imagine that uh, you know those accommodations are disappearing, uh, and uh, it's just you get on it. Uh, I mean, for me, actually traveling to it is, is a little bit... I'm rather close. I mean, I'm just in Southern California. Granted, it's yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's an hour flight or whatever it is, but it's uh, I'm closer than you are. I'm closer than some of the people that are coming from Canada or from other countries. So, um, I guess I'm fortunate in that regard. I don't have to wait until Friday to go home or whatever. I can go home, you know, Thursday night after the show yeah. at five o'clock. Yeah. I think it's six o'clock is my flight. So, yeah, I'm looking into extending my trip uh, because the Burning Man. Uh, event is happening that week and the week after, so really, about maybe popping over there for a couple of days and seeing what's going on. Yeah, interesting. We'll see. We'll see. Um, got a friend that uh, is considering going, so I might join up with her and this other big group of people. So we'll see, nice. see what it's all well, about. I've got uh, some new toys that I've been playing around with, getting ready for uh, doing some recording and broadcast on the floor okay. as well as in uh, in the hotel room. And uh, we'll see what we can put together for uh, a show over there. Should be yeah. should be pretty interesting. It's our first in person since we've done the show. It's, it's <laughs> our first in person ever, like mm-hmm. ever in person it's, of each yeah. other, and the first in person for the show, and a lot of firsts it's, here. That's so. right. Yeah, we, yeah, we haven't we haven't done an in person inter- even interview with anyone, have we? We've been very local. No. I think we did um, the one. I forget her name, but she was based in Chicago, so we were in the same city at the same time. Right, right. But haven't done anything uh, in person. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to actually, that's one of the things that I was thinking behind swapping out the new uh, soundboard that I got that we were playing with last week. And if you missed that intro, go back and rewatch it. It was hysterical playing with uh, sound effects like this one. All the new sound effects yeah. and stuff. So have you labeled there you them go. now? So you know which ones. Which... <laughs> no, I just memorized no? the the. Okay. I just memorized, memorized okay. the first floor, the first four on the first pad. But essentially, um, the, you know, there's there's different. There's another deck that's similar to this that doesn't have an HDMI capture because, quite frankly, uh, what, I'm I'm not going to use that. If I'm capturing my screen, it's going to be through screen capture software and not a separate device because I'm using you know my computer for this and and I edit. So are you thinking I don't stream that the, live, so. like the next size board the up duo, is going to be yeah. really better then? Yeah, the Duo, be because that's that's yeah. got the dual XLR inputs as well right. as, um, you know, a lot more audio-focused stuff, which is what I need right. as opposed to the, you know, and it also yeah. still has the the wireless mm-hmm. built in for the uh, for the mics. I, this is sacrilege. I'm holding up a DJI kit, and it's a Rode soundboard, so this will not be yeah. compatible, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you've got, like, the visuals, too, like the levels and things like that on there on the left. Yeah, left corner yeah, and, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's basically a whole and production it's what, it's board. What, it's what, one, 200 more? I think it's just one, maybe not even. Yeah. yeah. The problem is it's not available. So it's, it's, it's nobody's got it. So yeah. I got to find either I don't know maybe B and H. Um, the the Roadcaster Pro is available, but it's the Duet is the one that I need. Not the Duet. Sorry, the Duo. No. Um, Duo. Duo. I'm talking about Duet AI all day. So not that Duet. The Google's yes. Duet. This is the Duo. Have you heard uh, of anyone actually using it and like thinking about paying for it? 
no, I keep I, uh, I keep trying it. I keep playing around with it, and um, let's just hope that the maybe. page of updates that we have here today to talk about has the impact that I really think and have seen others talk about it having. Okay. Um, but I, I, you know, I have seen some people poking around with it and playing with it a lot. Um, but it's it's not necessarily a part of the daily workflow yet. Um, unfortunately, yeah. ChatGTP really has the um, the head start in that area for organizations thinking about integrating with APIs and things like that. Obviously, that's about to change, and I'm sure that there is a flood of announcements that are likely to be coming out of Google Next, uh, similar yeah, to how so, they did when Bard was announced in the first place. So, yeah, so that's my big. I mean, my my big question about the whole like Bard, ChatGPT, whatever it is, you know, is mm-hmm. is how well integrated can get into your like day to day workflow, right? And right. I think it's, it's some well, that depends on your workflow. Can find it, right? Yeah, and what they're doing, right? I mean, because I've, I've heard people that are using it every day to like build like uh, you know marketing campaigns, and they're, they're right. just, you know it's like done everything for them. They just use that, and it, boom, it's done. Um, so you know, if it's you know if it can integrate into those kind of users' workflows, I think that'd be great. Um, yeah, I, mean, I haven't really had a need for it personally. I think the stuff that I do mm-hmm. is you know um, so it just you just can't automate the stuff that I'm doing, right? It's, you know, specific stuff, um, right? But no, I've done it for yeah, a couple of things. Um, job description was really helpful. Um, I use it to uh, outline an SOP. was also really helpful. So, you know, little pieces, yeah. things here and there. It's not quite there, but I think that one of the things that we're going to see with this update in particular, especially being able to pull in from images and, um, you know, be more conversational than it already is and, um, you know, exporting directly, which is already sort of doing, is getting better. Um, you know, I think that these are going to be things that are really going to help. Apparently, coding is a huge update in this one uh, as well. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see how that works. All right. Well, let's run through the headlines there then of the updates we have for you this week. Uh, five, as I said, silent releases that came out in the recap post. Uh, first one is improved media viewing on Android devices in Google Chat. We were just playing around with that just before we uh, started this uh, meeting and or the the event here and it looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's, it's what you expect from, or what you've seen, I think as from, you know, iMessage on Apple and, you know, WhatsApp and everything else is, you mm-hmm. know, a quick view of the media that is being shared within the group and space kind of thing. Um, extending, uh, next one is extending long running queries with, within connected sheets. Uh, next filter by measures and value in a pivot table with connected sheets for Looker. So a couple there for connected sheets. Uh, oof, my, my favorite uh, update <laughs> of the year, adding emojis in Google Sheets. It's, you know, it's, I've been waiting for that one for ages. <laughs> it's finally out. It's, you know, not been able to work in Google Sheets until this has come out. I'm missing those emojis. <laughs> and then finally, <laughs> uh, a pretty big one, actually. This is, I don't, this didn't get a, its own update, but uh, pretty big. So scaling meetings to 1,000 attendees uh, with 500 attendees being viewers now available on the Workspace Education Plus tier. So I guess, you know, it's just specific to that Education Plus tier, but, uh, you know, a pretty significant update there for those using Meet to stream out to a lot of attendees. And then uh, the three that we saw during the week uh, is that paid appointment bookings are now available in Google Calendar. So we've kind of been talking about that in the last couple of weeks. Uh, So that is pretty significant, pretty cool there. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people using, you know, Calendly to to leverage that functionality. But here it is in uh, Google Calendar now with uh, that Stripe integration. Uh, next, the ability to negotiate time directly in Gmail to schedule meetings faster. And then finally, uh, adding hyperlinks uh, to text in Google Chat is now available. So you just don't uh, have to add the link below the text, but you can actually highlight the text you want and uh, have that hyperlink. Uh, and then, as we said, a lot of updates to Bard. Uh, those came out uh, middle of last week. Uh, so I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven uh, kind of major headline updates uh, for Bard this last week. We hadn't really seen much for, for a little while. So uh, nice to see a lot of updates coming just now all at once. And then, like I said, uh, Jesse probably seeing a bunch more coming uh, in, around next, I'm sure. 
Yeah, and I'm uh, poking around update. with it already now, and I yeah. think I think I'm already seeing a lot of these updates because it is it's answering questions that it wasn't answering before. So yeah, it's I think, much smoother I think the, and faster. Yeah, the Bard updates probably come out as we see them in the announcement. They're not uh, you know delayed like some of the workspace yep. updates we're seeing and kind of rolled out paces there. Um, quick, you know, just I'd probably skip over this so we can go through the details. But driver driver desktop has. Uh, you know, version 78 uh, has been released. That's just some additional bug fixes and performance improvements there. So not much to report. Uh, but then in Chrome 115, we uh, we have that coming out soon. And a few interesting things on the Emma console and, you know, and other things too. So we'll, we'll share the link so you can go through all of those interesting updates with uh, what 115 has. But we will touch on those uh, few admin console updates with some, uh, you know, new management card there at the admin console. Uh, new setup guide. Uh, there's a new Chrome OS settings page redesign. So that's kind of the, probably the most significant one uh, of the week, or you know, for, or for for this release. Uh, so you'll you'll notice that in the Emma console, and then yeah. some printing reports uh, available in the Chrome Management Reports API, and then a couple uh, policies uh, being added to the Emma console. So uh, those are. All the updates for the week and then we of course have a few things in the news as well so around four different things here so first one is uh, notebook lm formerly known as tailwind uh, announced that io is being renamed that's that's all you just have not actually heard of any of those things so we'll, we'll <laughs> you obviously didn't pay attention you. to io no not that much did not actually <laughs> And then we have Google's AI-powered notes app is now called, oh, well, there we go, Notebook LM. Yeah. Uh, and it's launching today. So there, oh, it's without the space, maybe. Um, and then, let's see, last two. We have uh, Bard uh, AI chatbot can talk and respond to visual prompts. Uh, so kind of everything that we were kind of alluding to in the, in the seven or so updates that we had with Bard this week. And, and then uh, last, uh, from the updates perspective, is that design, or news here, actually, sorry, uh, design manager at Brext used Bar to create Brex. a timer app in minutes. Yes, Brex being a bank, which, uh, which I love, mm -hmm. actually. I've, uh, I've used nice. this, guys. Pretty cool. So I was uh, chuckling before because um, one of the key questions that I asked Bard just as a little test, and also uh, related to this, if you haven't watched the most recent episode of SAS Showdown, which is also on our YouTube channel or SAS Showdown on the podcast networks produced by oh, moi, yeah. um, they were testing out uh, at, at the end of the episode, both in Bard and in ChatGTP, about writing a description for a podcast. And I uh, found out that Bard doesn't know who we are, or it sort of does, because it, it got the description of the podcast right, but then it yeah. said it was hosted by Chris and Michael. And then I, I rephrased the question, and it said it was hosted by somebody else. So I asked it again now for a description, and it didn't include who hosted it in the description. So when I asked it, who hosts the Google Workspace podcast. Here's what I got today. The Google Workspace Recap podcast is hosted by Ben Popper, a senior editor at The Verge. He is joined by a rotating cast of guests from Google okay. and the tech industry. Um, pretty sure Ben Popper okay. re retired. <laughs> pretty sure Ben Popper retired. Because, um. so remember <laughs> when, uh, I think when Bard first came out, I asked it, what is Google Workspace Recap? Mm -hmm. And immediately it came back saying this podcast was by Jesse Nolan and Steve Larson, who are both oh, experts in global right. space. Yeah. So it knew us in the beginning. So that was the other so, thing that I was thinking last week because I was just, uh, I got to pull up the chat. I think I, did I talk about this in last week's show? I don't remember. But it, like, I feel like it's just screwing with me at this point because yeah. it keeps saying it's hosted by, by all these other people and not us. Um, yeah. yeah. So it said, uh, where the hell was it? It said it was uh, Chris and Michael. Um, and then, uh, where was it? Shoot, here we go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. In each episode, Chris and Michael discuss the following and so on and so forth. And and before that, there were other names that it was saying. Um, 
that was just like, what, why, why? Uh, Ryan Lee and Ben Lafferty. I don't know who those people are. Experts in Go Worses, and they bring their knowledge and insights to each episode. So then um, I asked it, who hosts, I asked it directly, exactly what I said here, who hosts the Google Workspace Recap Podcast? And it told me mm-hmm. that the Google Workspace Recap Podcast is hosted by Jesse Nolan and Steve Larson, and then gave our, our bios here, yeah. which was uh, oh, pretty yeah. accurate. This is weird. So I, th- I think Bart is just, I got a, you know. I got, um, a new, I got a new one, the, like new names. Do you hear of Kenny <laughs> Banguis and... Uh, Nirmal K- Kumanjir. Yeah, look. Well, look at the link what? I saw. Just, I'm adding a new one. Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna. Hold on. I'm gonna copy and paste. It's weird. All right. We have a doc really on this. Some responses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like. Oh my new, god. Uh, like, here, listen. That's that's oh what just god. came through. That's the new one. Oh, I'm gonna try to get the formatting right. There you go. Yeah. So that's what just came through. The new response section. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Yeah. I mean, it got. <laughs> A lot of the information correct, but a lot of it wrong. Yeah, especially the hosts. <laughs> uh, right. Yes. All right. Uh, Bard, why are you screwing with me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I want to be your friend, Bard, please. The, the, the greatest thing about all of this, though, is that at the end of, uh, you know, at the end of each Bard, um, I mean, it's it's Bard, but it's it, it's Duet, because I'm doing it in Google Docs here, not in bard.google.com. And uh, at the bottom Bard. here, That's, yeah, that was uh, so Bard, I did it, I, I'm yeah. doing it right now in, in Duet, because eh, basically the same. Uh, okay. I think they're the same. Anyway, um, they should be the same if they're not. Uh, but it says this is a creative writing aid not intended to be factual so there you have it folks Um, let's see if I do bard.google.com what comes up when I say um, who hosts google workspace recap podcast survey says thinking 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 Thinking, still thinking. Oh. Aha! Hosted, got it correct. Got it correct. If, but. if you search for Kenny, uh, like the name, and then Google, like the very first result says Kenny Banguist Google Workspace Recap. On LinkedIn. Who the hell is this guy? I don't know, but he, oh, you know what? He, you know why? Because he has his experience listed as Google Workspace Recap. That's his job. Nah. Yeah. He, yeah, he has the company listed as. Did we get hosed? Yeah. Do we get? Do we get? So LinkedIn, no. I have a gripe yeah. with LinkedIn, yeah. and LinkedIn. What LinkedIn does is they let anybody, anybody, mm-hmm. unverified. By the way, list totally unverified. I don't have to confirm it at all. List that they work for a company, and there's no way that I can say they don't work for the company other than reporting them. And that, I feel, is probably what is happening here, and I am very not happy with this. Ooh, ooh, this makes me mad. So we work hard for this, people. Where is this clown? Uh, there's Well, there's two of them that are on here on LinkedIn. Well, One's his LinkedIn so. member, and the other one's his LinkedIn member. So yeah. where, where where's the link for that? Oh, there it is. Can he... Yeah, just, yeah, just search for the two names, and then you'll see they're, you know... Yeah, they've attached themselves. That... That's what happened. Clown from the Philippines. Yeah. I'm gonna report him. One is from Sri Lanka and one is from the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna report him full time for a year and six months. <laughs> that is not factual. Well, the the other one says you know no job, but it just still shows workspace recap. So. Yeah. Now, now I'm just now I'm mad. No, now I'm mad. Yeah. Microsoft, you and I are gonna have words about LinkedIn. This is BS. Yeah. Well, hey, where's where's the know. cursing button on here? Nice. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the show. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> yes, please. All right. Uh, first one here: improved media viewing in Android, uh, device, on Android devices in Google Chat. So yeah, when you're in a um, you know group message, individual and one on one, you have this new uh, kind of menu to kind of see the different media that's being shared there. Uh, so that is an added option uh, when you click on the on the name uh, in the group or the user in the space and sort of see all the media that's been shared there in that conversation. Uh, next, uh, we have the extension of long running queries within Google Sheets or connected connected sheets. Uh, so the timeout uh, currently uh, is five minutes for connected sheets. So this week uh, that is being extended from five to ten minutes for BigQuery and Looker. 
So we'll be able to analyze more data there, uh, larger query sets. Uh, and then next, the ability to filter uh, by measures and value in a pivot table with connected sheets for Looker. So uh, there was some ability to do dimensions uh, in pivot tables, but not measures. Uh, so now Looker users are able to filter by measures with the pivot table. I'll give you some more targeted analysis there on connected sheets. Uh, and additionally, uh, you'll also be able to filter by value in a pivot table on a connected sheet. So a couple updates there for those of you leveraging those uh, kind of meta integration. And then uh, next, uh, emojis in Google Sheets. So you'll be able to, <laughs> you know, express yourself more in Sheets, which I don't really know who has ever thought this, but apparently some people need it. It's a lot of Anything steps to get to it, too. You hit the yeah. add symbol, you gotta scroll yeah. down, you gotta click emoji, right. then you gotta emoji. find the emoji. Right. Mm -hmm. I, you know what, if I need it, I just probably just go to Google and like Google an emoji and then copy paste the image and then paste it in there. I don't know what I've <laughs> usually done, but I don't. Well, it's now available with the with the at emoji option. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a, a more uh, useful update here is that Google Meet uh, is scaling to 1,000 attendees and 500 uh, attendees being viewers for those on the Google Space Enterprise Plus tier. So, yeah. Uh, so for those of you there uh, on the education side, you'll be happy to see that update and um, take advantage of that as you, as, you, as you can. Yeah, I really need to test the translation, the auto captioning translation uh, capabilities here because again, for, you know, for my main client here, the, the town hall that they do quarterly is still happening yeah. on Zoom because they have the transcription uh, with the translator, a person typing them out on a stenographer. Right. And, uh, yeah. you know, if Meet can handle it now, then I would love to switch them over. Mm -hmm. um, cool. All right, next <laughs> one. So No, it's fine. Um, I just, I was looking at the order in which they have the, like, the recap post and then versus the order they came out, which we typically do them, you know, first in the week to last. So uh, just a different order. That's so why I was like kind of looking at this. But um, from the RSS yeah, feed here, the, yeah, so sorry. The, so the first update that we have, um, at least from my logs here, yeah, the 10th, on the 10th, is that there are paid appointment bookings available now in Google Calendar. So this was just kind of an update. Um, well, sorry, there's an update here that just came in today. Uh, just to the end user rollout by several days. So we will, of course, mention that at the end here in the rollout pace. Uh, but this is, you know, what we kind of mentioned the other week was, uh, you know, Stripe being able to yep. connect into your appointment, uh, you know, scheduling calendar there. And, uh, you know, take some, uh, take some payments there if you're you know, kind of in that industry and that's what you do. Uh, so be able to connect that Stripe account into the calendar and creating those appointments uh, for uh, for events, and um, I think there's a pretty good animation here of what that looks like in terms of you know checking out and booking it. Uh, you know, kind of a pretty good uh, workflow there with that. Uh, this will you know I think the, there will be the ability for admins to turn this on and off. Uh, so for for users on Business Standard, this feature will be on by default be disabled by admins in the console there. Uh, for all our SKUs, it'll be off by default. So I don't know why business standard got this on for some reason, by default. I don't know, maybe a lot of business standard users wanting it uh, for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, it'll be off. You'll have to enable that for your users. Uh, and then, you know, once enabled, of course, as the end user, you'll be able to set that up, I think, with your own Stripe account. So uh, roll up pace on this, the admin settings uh, will be available or have been available since the 10th of July on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility for both scheduled release and rapid release domains. Uh, the end user settings though, uh, those will not be coming out until a little bit later. So rapid release domains will not see those until the 27th of July on a gradual rollout up to uh, 15 days for visibility there. And then scheduled release domains, uh, you'll have to wait even a little bit longer till the 9th of August uh, also a 15-day uh, you know, 
up to 15 days for visibility there on that one. And this is available to business standard uh, tiers and up. So it'll include standard plus um, uh, enterprise standard and plus, and then of course the education, and then education and fundamentals, uh, education standard, education plus, and teaching learning upgrade, along with nonprofits and workspace individual users. So it doesn't seem like it's coming to uh, personal Google accounts, but those with workspace individual only. Uh, next, uh, the ability to negotiate time directly in Gmail to schedule meetings faster. Uh, this so, is huge. Yeah, yeah. So trying to schedule time with people in the org, uh, you know, just it's, it's just making it, uh, you know, a bit faster here. So there's a little uh, button to schedule it. Uh, kind of create. Looks like it's like creating a little window of time, right? And then yep, inserting that into the email, giving some people an options. Yep. Exactly. So it really, you know, it's based on, you know, the person that's sending that email, you know, giving everyone like a window of time there. But, uh, you know, it, uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's not something that you can do like, oh, like a vote on all these times, right? It's not like something like that, but it's still no. uh, a big improvement to uh, make it easier to schedule times. I, yeah. yeah. Think more Calendly than, um, oh, it's that when will you vote on times? It's very popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blanking on it now. I know I've used it a couple loop, times. Looper, it's not Monday, is it? Ling, no, no. Vote on times. Doodle, doodle. Doodle, that's the one. Doodle, yeah, super not... popular. Yeah. So think, think more Calendly options when you send in an email yeah. than a doodle selection. Right. Right. Yeah. But this is this is more. Um, Excuse me, my voice is a little, it's been a long day. Um, this is more you're manually selecting the times in your calendar for the next couple of days or whatever it is that uh, that you select as opposed to Calendly where it's generally just your preset or it'll give based on your availability right. uh, as opposed to yes. this. So, you know, I think I kind of like this one a little bit better. Calendly still has one advantage that we've had uh, where it's able to check against multiple calendars to make sure it's free. Right. So I have my personal calendar, my tab geeks calendar, my well, you know, client calendars and stuff like that. And so my calendar yeah, can I mean, check I, through those, but right. Well, I can do that with my can. appointment booking calendar too. Right. So I can send an against appointment against multiple I can, other people's yeah. calendars as well. As long as they're shared with you and you can access them. Yes. You can select right. them. You yeah. have to have them shared on there. That's what, that's another way to do it. Even, um, yeah, even no, we've, busy. we've done yeah, things I mean, for like, so you like know, staff, like a general yeah. staff, you could be like, you know, here's the calendar that, you know, my team, has right so here's the team calendar link right right and yeah you're like all right well when do we want to meet you know or like if you're sending that you know if you're meeting if your team is meeting maybe another team or another person you can have these different appointment slots created and link all those calendars together so it's possible yeah it might work with yeah. that for uh for it just, it just gets a lot of it's without giving access to the whole calendar well, kind of set up. it just gets cumbersome when you have now all these overlapping appointment calendars on your calendar because you see you know you right. see those blocks of time all the time and you create these new uh, new calendar appointment slots yeah so that's what i've done it's a little bit annoying is that yeah i'm seeing all these different you know overlaps of appointment um, mm -hmm. slots so but yeah, if you need to do it it works right yeah. cool all right. Uh, yeah, some some info on how to uh, off, you know offer times you're free and create an event in there. Uh, so I'm just looking here. Time suggestions can only be made for your primary calendar calendar, and it works only only work for one-on-one -on -one meetings. So you know that's unfortunate. But if both people are included in the recipient list, only the first person to book an appointment will be added to the event automatically. Yeah. So I guess that's that, that's a little unfortunate, right? Mm -hmm. so it's really just for one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, yep. Yeah. We're getting that's there, right. getting closer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so feature this feature, of course, will be on by default. Uh, no ammo controls for this at all, and uh, rollout pace for this is uh, or has started on the 11th of July for rep release domains. Uh, 15 days for visibility there. And then uh, schedule release domains will start at the end of the month on the 31st. Uh, I also want to gradually roll out up to 15 days for visibility and available to all workspace customers uh, and users with personal Google accounts. All right, and then last but not least in terms of the workspace updates, uh, the, ability to add, the ability to add hyperlinks to text in Google Chat. So instead of just 
adding that long hyperlink uh, at the end or somewhere in the middle of the conversation and what you're going to send, uh, you can highlight some text and uh, hyperlink to it. So, yeah, and you know, and they use the hyperlinks. I think in this uh, announcement, yep. I think they didn't use it last time, did they? I don't know. They did. No, it was shown in a different post. Because I was, I was making, I was like making a joke about the hyperlink term or something like that, right? I thought maybe they said something else, like link, just like link to yeah, uh, tag, like link in text. But anyways, uh, <laughs> this one is uh, rolling out already to the rep release uh, domains uh, starting on the 13th of July. Uh, cred roll, roll out for them, 15 days for visibility uh, as per usual. And then for schedule release domains, this will start the 1st of August uh, on a one to three day rollout. Uh, full rollout there uh, with one to three days for that uh, for feature visibility and all workspace customers as well as those with personal Google accounts for that one. All right. Yeah, to reiterate uh, there, yeah. that is out of order. If you're trying to follow along on the Workspace Updates blog, oh, um, yeah. it is right. out of order from exactly. what's there. And I'm going to have to be really careful oh, yeah. when There's I'm editing. Stuff out of order. Because sometimes I just get in the zone and I'm creating the images for the video here, the title cards, and I just, you know, copy, paste, and push, and download, and move it across, is, and, yeah. you know, cut, and put it in, and I don't even look at, you know, I don't always 100% listen to what I'm putting it there, so I'm going to have to be real one, careful yeah. on this episode. It's yeah, full follow of, our notes. Full of, uh, follow yeah, our notes this time. Full of potholes right for me. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Don't follow the the recap post from Google. Four updates? No, it was five. Oh, and then I always the follow the recap post. <laughs> All right, new rule: you always have to follow the recap podcast. post. <laughs> and like our notes, like uh -huh. shows. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bard updates. Here we go. Yeah. So first one that we've had since early June, I think. Yeah, the seventh of June. Uh, so it's been over a month, really. Uh, biggest one I think is by the top. And that is more languages, more countries. It's gonna, you know, it's more easily available to people, uh, not just in the U.S. and in, in English. Uh, so there's 40 new languages. It's going to be included, and then uh, 27 uh, new countries. So uh, a lot, uh, you know, EU and Brazil. So mostly Europe, but still, uh, it is available to more countries now and languages. Uh, next is Google Lens in Bard. With, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go through all the details and everything here, but uh, <laughs> Google Lens and Bard is the, another headline. This is the one you're asking uh, about. Bard. Well, yeah, I know. True, it was the one I was asking about. So <laughs> being able to upload images there alongside the text uh, to kind of give it more context to what you're looking for. Uh, next one though is that Bard can read responses out loud. I mean, okay, nice. Uh, I guess that's kind of part of. Uh, maybe accessibility. The Google Assistant. Well, not accessibility, but maybe uh, part of it being like Google Assistant type of functionality. So when we said, you know, hey, Bard, like, you know, responding to that. Really? Uh, perhaps now it can talk back to you on your know, device or at home. So we'll see if that's maybe the next iteration of that update. I am skeptical, but I am hopeful. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm praying that, for though. it, honestly. I want Bard yeah. in Google Assistant, please. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might just be like an extension of it. Like, like I think the way it, that we saw it was, you know, hey, Google Assistant, open up Bard kind of thing. Yeah, ask Bard. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. don't hack it. Build it. Right. Uh, next is pinned in recent threads. So just kind of being of the... Keep track That's of cool. and asking it. Feature so, parity with sure. uh, ChatGDP. Okay. <laughs> uh, sharing your barred conversations with others. Uh, so being able to like, create some shareable links there. And, and then uh, two more here is that you'd be able to modify barred responses. So, I mean, I guess that's, that's kind of, we've seen a lot of options to extract those responses out of there. Yep. Uh, be able to make them a little bit simpler, uh, shorter longer here or more professional, more casual type of thing. Uh, and then finally, ec uh, extracting uh, Python code to Replit. I've actually not heard of Replit, but um, you know, uh, 
Uh, there's a collaborative IDE um, application for developers. Uh, so it's the, yeah, essentially a cloud IDE. So cool. That's what that is. I've not used it yet, but I, I was I was looking for a lot of cloud IDEs back in the day, trying to find something that was was good. I've not come across that one yet, but something new, I'm sure. Uh, all right, so that sums up the BART updates there. Uh, as I said, uh, Drive for uh, Desktop has a very minor update, version 78, with some bug fixes and uh, performance improvements. And then next, a little bit more detailed updates here to Chrome uh, version 115 coming out. And uh, first one being the uh, new Chrome Browser Cloud Management Card, which you will start to see on the home page there of the of your admin console. So it's kind of taking you uh, it's a little bit more visible there about CBCM uh, functionality. Uh, next, there is the Chrome setting page redesign. So this is probably the most impactful uh, to those of you, uh, you know, using any kind of Chrome settings. And it really doesn't have to be CBCM type of stuff. It's it's really going to be anything Chrome related. So if you are, you know, using the Chrome settings in any way for Chrome OS, uh, you know, CBCM, or, or you know, otherwise, uh, you will start to see a re you know a new look to those admin uh, that admin console. For all the settings. Oh, uh, this is why it looks so familiar when I was looking through it in the notes. I've had this in testing yeah. for like four years. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking I've at I've had now, access to this like since 2018, I think. It's been, I it's, been a, it's been a long time. Yeah, I know Like, if you were part of some of the like, yeah. Chrome Alpha beta releases, it has been, it's yep. been there for a while. I remember, I think, like mentioning this in, you know, the, the Chrome channel in Mac admins and uh, I forget his name over at Airbnb. What is his name? Um, he's yeah. like huge into the Chrome stuff. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah, I, I remember him mentioning it. Like it's just, it's been there for forever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they, they're finally, finally releasing the redesign. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's coming out and, um, which is good because I couldn't share my screen on that part of the admin panel for a long time because there's a big red Dang. confidential on the bottom. <laughs> oh, okay, so I haven't seen that then. No. And it was yeah, Graham, Graham Gilbert, so I was thinking of. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, so yeah, maybe I have not seen this because I've not seen any kind of banner at all in any of the Chrome settings before. Hmm. All right. Yeah. I think I tried to sign up a lot of times, it just maybe it hasn't worked. Like after we had sometimes it's right time right place you yeah. know i was particularly um shall we say um bugging the hell out of the team that was building on the uh, the admin panel back in 2018 at next and i think that's probably what got me in because i was just like when are you no maybe it was 2017 i don't remember i was like when are you going to fix this like make this faster make it more functional why is this so hard to use and then that was when they kind of clued me into the fact that it was getting a complete overhaul and then i kind of got added to a couple of different things there so yeah actually i met one of the team, like the design companies and teams that was doing some of that redesign way back when I was oh, in yeah. London, which is like four, four plus years ago. It was before we met. Yeah. They were, they were part of the team that was like doing some of the redesign. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we've been working on this for a while. Um, even yeah. at that point they were working on it for a while. It's been in and, the uh, works. Yeah. It's been, it's been a long time. All right. Uh, next is the Chrome setup guide. So some, you know, Kind of little tiles of how to get Chrome OS uh, set up for uh, different kind of things, creating test orgs, adding users for testing, those kind of things. Uh, you know, kind of, of you know, how to get started essentially with those Chrome settings for you as an admin. So some interesting little uh, help, essentially like kind of you know get you started guides there now in the admin console. Uh, next, the Village of Print Reports uh, is going to be available in the Chrome Management Reports API. So some new endpoints there uh, being added to allow access to printing reports. Uh, so this will be, this will provide uh, like a per user per printer summary uh, printing reports as well as listing all print jobs submitted to managed printers. 
Uh, and then finally, a couple uh, new uh, settings within the Yammer console. So uh, now you'll have enable autofill for uh, addresses and enable autofill for credit cards as options. So being able to uh, allow users to use or not use those, uh, those features there. And uh, yeah, that wraps up all of the updates that I have for you this week. Uh, Jesse, over to you with the, uh, the news updates there with some hard ones to kick things off. All right, so uh, yeah, for anyone who is paying attention over at IO, one of the interesting things that was announced was called Tailwind. It was kind of a private AI um, integrated notebook where you were going to be able to write out your notes and then um, ask questions based on your notes and say, hey, how, you know, what was the meetings that I took in this and this day? What did I say about that? And it would be able to pull that up for you. And, um, you know, that really kind of lit the spark in my mind of, hey, we could build something like this for, for um, clients and customers to be able to look at their internal data. And that's something that I'm looking into uh, doing right now. Um, but this was something that really piqued my interest because I take a lot of notes, but let's be honest, I can't always find them when I'm looking for them. And I thought that this would be I mean, I'm pretty sure it's targeted at education, but this would be really, really helpful for somebody like me. And so it seems that they have um, changed the name. It is now called Notebook LM, one word. It is an AI-first notebook grounded in the information you choose and trust because, well, it comes from you. So that makes sense. Uh, it's only an experiment, and it's currently unavailable in the U.S. Join the waitlist to try it yourself. So that's the other news item here is that it is now available to join the waitlist. It does say in the next article that I have that it has launched today, which was already last week, but um, only to a very small amount of people. So join the waitlist if you're interested in that. Steve, did you have something you want to, to say? No, no, just I was looking at the uh, list, you know, and asked you like what industry you're in. A lot of education uh, drop downs there and just like, right. oh, and then some random tech sector topic, you know, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, definitely education kind of focused. Yeah, definitely education focused, but would be super useful for somebody like me. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. Um, Seems super cool, and they're not the only ones doing this. Uh, Dropbox, Notion, I imagine Click, ClickUp. Also, I think I heard them say something about this. They're all working on you know some form of this. This is the future yeah. of note taking. Is you know dump all your data in, and then the AI will bring it to you. Um, yeah, I so actually is this, uh, is this something like an Evernote? Maybe would you think? Well, Evernote. Do you really want to talk about Evernote? Evernote is a uh, well, kind of a shit show at the moment. This is. <laughs> That's that's why I was kind of bringing it up. Whew. I just thought that because like, this is something better than Evernote. I did mm -hmm. migration from Evernote over to Google, and I don't know. so I was wondering what your thoughts. Like, is it is it something similar to Evernote? You should say uh, that depends on how the note taking works and how it's all organized and what it allows you to dump in. Because one of the cool things for me personally, when I used to use Evernote, was the Clipper to be able to grab stuff, images and text off of the internet and just dump it into notes and write notes about it. And I found that very, very helpful. And so I guess we're going to have to see how this is, how this is set up and what kind of things it allows you to capture um, as it goes on. For those who are not following along or seeing this in the news, um, Evernote, I think, was sold and uh, basically fired everybody in the U.S., moved the company to Europe and are starting over to some effect. So really, well, strange turn of events there. How often does a company get bought, fire everyone, and move? Yeah. Uh, has When's the last time that has happened? An Name Italian, another company. An Italian company. To. Yeah, that an Italian spending spoons bought them. It was an Italian okay. company. Sure. <laughs> Started in Copenhagen. But, yeah. Good for them. Weird yeah. tactic there, people. Not... Uh, did they keep anybody? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't an aqua hire because they fired everybody? So what were they going for? The tech? Are they going to shut it down? I don't know. I'd be really weary about sticking with, sticking with Evernote at the at the moment. And if I were you, I would start backing up your information and making sure that you have that where you can access it and you know get to it should it just one day stop working. Um, I actually uh, was in an article in I think in Inc. Magazine whatever, online, uh, several years ago, talking about this exact title, is that sometimes your information just gets trapped, and if you don't have backups of it, when it goes poof, it's gone. So, you'd be warned. 
That was an interesting tangent. Didn't expect to get into that this week. <laughs> um, so we have a uh, to finish that up. We have a Verge article talking about Tailwind, now called Notebook LM, and what it offers. Some screenshots, uh, some gifts of uh, of what you can do in it. And uh, if you're interested in that, you should go and join the waitlist. Then we have another Verge article, which basically goes over what we talked about for the updates in Bard, as uh, obviously, as usual, more updates and information of uh, some, of the, some of the things that you can do. But it is pretty much uh, similar to what we were talking about here. And then the last thing, which is also Bard, is something that um, really starts to show off the power and capability of Bard in programming, something that I'm not quite qualified to talk about because I'm not, I mean, I dabble, but I'm not really a programmer. But this individual, who is a design manager at the company Brex, used Google Bard to create a basic timer app for the iPhone in under four minutes, quoting just from a screenshot. So essentially, he, he says here, did not give it hints as to what the app did and provided all of the and it provided all of the code it made some mistakes but nothing it couldn't fix and then he has a video here of the whole process and he basically took this and was able to run it as a basic app on an iPhone so that's pretty pretty crazy um i don't know if anyone has tried to do that with chat gtp um but uh i imagine that maybe i don't know go try it Go find out for us. I am finding it amusing that as I am scrolling through this post, I'm getting an ad on Twitter for a company that is called Ads GTP, which is Google Ads written and run by um, Chat GTP, which is kind of funny here. Um, but the account that's doing it is called Null. It at real null 42 and is verified and has 300 followers my guess is they just started and uh, that's a brand new account and um yeah advertising on twitter has gotten interesting these days um if i were writing something that was going to be doing programmatic uh operations of my advertising for google ads it would definitely be over uh using well duet in gcp and, and so on so but we digress uh, if you're interested in this, click on the link in the show notes, and you can see the whole video of how he set this up. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. It's a brave new world. Machines coding code. Coding for us. All right, that's all for this week. Send us your questions and comments on Twitter at Workspace Recap and on, on our website, WorkspaceRecap.com. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up. Hit the like button, etc. wherever you are listening to us or watching us. We appreciate you coming back every week. We hope to see you at Google Next. If you haven't registered for that, go ahead and uh, and do that and let us know where you will be. And hopefully we can do a meetup of some sort, whether it's an official one or an unofficial one or sponsored or otherwise. We'd love to meet you all out in Google Next at Google Next, I suppose I'd say. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Workspace Recap.